Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Me Hunters. Today we're carrying out some red deer herd management in the Highlands of Scotland. We're joined by Rob, who's the owner of Benula Sporting Estate, his good mate John, and estate manager and head stalker Angus. So let's take a pause to meet Rob. He can fill us in on the estate and what we're getting up to. Hi Matt, firstly welcome to, uh, to the Highlands. Just a quick introduction, I'm Rob Phillips. I'm the owner of Benula Sporting Estate, which is where you are now, which is located in the Highlands of Scotland, a small village called Cannock, which is west of Inverness and uh, just above Loch Ness. So obviously we're in the Highlands here today. Uh, the weather's looking a little bit grim and the wind is up, but I'm sure uh, you're not averse to those sort of conditions. Just to introduce Benula, the estate itself, uh, it's located four miles up a loch, which is only accessible by uh, boat. We have a, a landing craft style boat which enables us to get the Argos up and down the lock. We have the second tallest mountain in the British Isles on the estate so that obviously tells you that the terrain is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not too much to handle but it does offer something in the realms of stalking that are quite a lot of Highland, uh, traditional Highland stalking estates don't have. You, you definitely earn your stalking and your hunting up here on this estate. Uh, so why do we need to cull deer? So we carry out deer culling on the estate uh, just to control deer numbers and um, it's quite a complex process but to condense it a deer count is carried from the sky via a helicopter. Those numbers are then disseminated down to um, the deer management groups and then as individual estates in the area we're given deer figures or cull targets that we try to achieve. There's only so much natural food source available on the ground. If we were just to leave them to their own vices, they would breed, numbers would increase, and as a result, they would literally starve to death or start to starve to death because there wouldn't be the food source to sustain them. So we carry out culling to control those deer numbers so that doesn't happen. So the first port of call is to go and pick up one of Rob's Argos, which we'll see soon. However, as we approach the start of the estate, it becomes really clear that we're going to be in for a cracker of a day. The binos go up and we manage to locate some nice herds of deer straight away. In everything that Rob does, he's well prepared and all the logistics are well planned out. Hence the awesome landing craft and this awesome bit of kit called an Argo. As you will see later, this goes almost anywhere and they're even amphibious. Apart from this kit making the whole experience that much cooler, they're also essential. Remember, these guys do this almost every single day of the season. So with the Argo unloaded and the boat secured, it was time to start our ascent. Holy smokes, what a morning. The, uh, looks like a bit of rain's about to roll in, but I'm just looking up at this hill here, which is called The Face. That's what I get. It's pretty obvious why it's just a huge big hill face. And man, I don't know, it's got to be 40, 50 deer just scattered out across it. There's one really big herd and they uh, seem to be moving, I can see them moving uphill. 
now since we've beached, uh, beached here, but what an absolutely stunning place. Freaking beautiful here. Barrenly beautiful is uh, how I would describe it. It's pretty incredible. So, yeah. But, um, so we're going to find out the plan in a second. Um, obviously going to do some stalking. Wind's coming across the face, so we're going to have to do a bit of a loop and go around it. But, uh, yeah, good times anyway. It's beautiful. Just absolutely stunning. Now, even though we could, we don't use the Argos to ascend the hills. The noise from the engines would make getting close to these skittish deer even harder. We are manoeuvring it into a position, so if we do shoot a deer, it's already close to a good access point. As mentioned before, Rob spares no expense when it comes to logistics, and there is already another, newer Argo waiting towards the other end of the estate. Now just like any ascension, speed is not the key. Slow and steady will win the race, and Angus is a master at keeping a good pace so the group doesn't tire. What do you reckon, John? I reckon it's awesome. It's pretty amazing, eh? Yeah. Rob, you got a good place here, mate. Yeah, love his life. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, you can see why they call it the face. So up and up we'd go, and once we did get into the bowl, the weather really started to set in. I'd actually done a little interview, but the wind was so bad you couldn't even hear what I was saying. As we got up towards the top of the bowl, the deer activity picked up fast, and we managed to spot this absolutely beautiful royal. As mentioned though, we're here to do herd management, and there was absolutely no way we'd want to remove this beautiful stag from the gene pool yet. An animal like this will only get shot after it's past its prime, and you would have to be amazingly lucky and blessed to get that opportunity. There's never a shortage of excitement. There's always a deer walking somewhere close by. The main issue with it is trying to find one that is going to be in a correct position to put a stalk on. So with no opportunities in the bowl, we decided to walk back towards the face and we are now walking along the top edge of it. Our hope is that we run into one of those big herds we'd seen earlier. They should be up on the top here somewhere. We managed to find a big rock that would get us out of the wind for a while. So we decided to have some lunch and take in the breathtaking scenery. There is something strange about high hills and deep valleys that makes me feel at home. Not long after lunch, we managed to spot one of the big herds. Angus has been on these hills for over 40 years, so he goes forward to try and come up with a good plan of attack. Sure enough, when Angus got back, he had a great plan laid out. So we decided to drop a little bit of gear, and then just like that, the stalk was on. As you might have seen, Angus has been carrying this rifle the whole time. It's actually part of the tradition here. As the head stalker, he's responsible to set up the final shooting position and get the gun ready and safe.
Usually once the stalk starts, only the head stalker and the shooter will advance. With so many eyes in the herds, we want to keep the amount of people and silhouettes to a minimum. So with no sign of the herd, we decide to keep slowly pushing around. All we could do was hope that they hadn't got wind of us and that they weren't too far away. Every new crest we came to, we'd stop and glass. And then finally, we found a lone stag that had been kicked off from the main herd and he was coming our way. This was the moment we'd all been waiting for. Mother Nature, as canny as she can be, decided to turn everything up a few notches. The rain started coming down heavier, the wind started howling, and even my GoPro would decide to turn off. Luckily for us though, Rob and John were in a good position and managed to capture the shot. Did you get him? Thank you very much. No, I could just see you. Oh, yeah, okay. Fire shot. Gotcha, that's cool. Yeah. It's 160 for the first scope, and then it stopped up there. It should have so been. I don't even know where you shot. The government was up that way. It should have been top of the heart, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Well done, mate. First Scottish stag. Ah, thanks. Now Angus has got bludger. Bludger? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's better than getting whipped in Hungary. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> so we keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shot, stag fell over super quick and um, yeah, we're here obviously as mentioned before to try and take out some cull stags to you know help the herd management and stuff and so Rob, why is this one a good one to take out of the 
herd. Yeah, so basically, Mike, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, we, we like to carry out herd management within the estate. And if you remember first thing this morning, we got you straight on to uh, quite a large deer, uh, which was a royal, uh, which is a 12 point uh, red stag. Um, unfortunately, <coughs> he was just a little bit too good. And um, we need, that's the sort of deer quality that we need to keep in the herd. Yep. Um, so then uh, a few hours later and walking around on the hill, we hear this fellow bellowing away. And uh, after glassing him, decided that he's an ideal coal stag. Reason he's an ideal coal stag is uh, if you look at his antler growth off to the one side, uh, it's not symmetrical. The points are off and it's very thin in the beam, um, which would lead me to think he probably sustained an injury on his uh, opposite side at some point. Um, so you can see basically that the, the antlers is, is never really going to make a good stag and all he's going to do is pass his genes on into the herd and, and, and keep that gene going so hence the term culling um, so we identified him as a cull stag and, and you did the rest yeah cool man so super happy and uh, yeah that stag we saw earlier was he was a monster he was a big boy yeah, yeah was he, awesome. he was a big boy yeah, yeah. Uh, he was he was a good one to leave on the hill yeah 100 percent Congratulations on your uh, on your first stag, mate. Thank you very well much. Done. And such a like a beautiful scenic place. Like literally behind the camera, there's a massive big rainbow and stuff like that. It's cracking. So yeah. yeah, it's been a bit of a challenging day today with the wind. Yeah, it's caught us out a few yeah, times. Yeah, we swirling we've, issues. Didn't we? We've probably been on four or five different stags. Yep. And then at the end of the day, uh, it's three o'clock now in the afternoon. We don't usually shoot after 1600, four o'clock, just so it allows us enough time to get back down safely to the boat. Um, so really, we kind of pulled out of the bag right yeah. at the last minute. Yeah, sweet man. It's funny how it all comes together sometimes, eh? Hey? It was good, yeah. It was a good shot as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah happy with it. I haven't, uh, apart from yesterday, I haven't fired a rifle in about a year, so... <laughs> no bow hunting here, man. No bow hunting here. <laughs> but, uh, it's all good. Thank you very much to the animal too. It's nice. Uh, yeah. You always got to pay a bit of respect to the animal. Definitely, it's yeah. It's a nice, uh, humbling moment for everyone. So. Well done. Sweet. Got to get them out of here now. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Now, now the hard work starts. Yeah. <laughs> now, because we were getting short on time, Rob and John, the absolute legends, decided to start pulling my deer down while I packed my camera gear up. Not long after Angus had blooded me and after he'd grolic the deer, which is a Scottish terminology for removing the intestines, Angus had headed back to the boat and would drive around to that new Argo I'd mentioned earlier. We would drag the deer down the hill to the top of the cut track and Angus would bring the Argo up to meet us. We were then going to put the deer onto the Argo, jump in it ourselves and all head down the hill together. I am, yeah. Okay. So the old ones, the Argon. As the Argo made its way up to the top of the cut, I had a little bit of time to reflect on the day, and it was an awesome one at that. I love a good bit of exercise, and the more work you have to put in to get an animal, the more rewarding it feels. However, I cannot deny that Rob has found a sweet spot here between work and logistical ease. Even if you were not super fit, or had a bad knee, this awesome team will be able to work with you to give you an unforgettable experience. You could also come after the snow has fallen as this pushes the deer lower down the hills in search of food and that of course means less climbing for you. For me at least the absolute best thing about this whole experience is that we're doing it for conservation and we're looking after a natural resource. But I'm also someone that likes toys, and heading down this hill with success strapped to the front is pretty damn awesome as well. We would continue to hunt over the next few days, and the place just got more and more beautiful. It even snowed. Tomorrow it would be John's turn to drop a stag, and he ends up being one very lucky man. 
If you want to see John's hunt, that is out now on our channel as well. Just make sure you check out part two. I tell you what, many people have turned up to the boat wrap at the end of a successful day with a boat full of fish. I don't think too many people would be able to say they've turned up with a nice Scottish red stag. I have to say a massive thank you Rob. You have a great thing going here at Benula and I cannot speak highly enough about my experience. And to Kate who's Rob's rock, thanks so much for having amazing home cooked meals waiting for us. Really made a huge difference at the end of a long day. Angus, you're a true professional, a man that sticks to his traditions and I also cannot thank you enough for the work that you put in to get me my first Scottish stag. John, you're a champion mate, I really enjoyed hunting with you. Hope we can do some more in the future. And last but not least, thank you so much to everybody who's watching this. Check us out on social media and make sure you check out part two.